Another interesting setting for our moment of inertia problems is that of shells. That is very, very thin, almost two-dimensional plates in 3D. Now, these can be handled using double integrals, and we're going to do an example where, with a little bit of cleverness, we can really compute the moment of inertia of something interesting. In this case, consider a cubical shell. Think of like a cube where the, the boundary faces of this are made of metal or something like that, really thin. And let's rotate that about a vertical axis. Okay, so a little bit of setup and we'll be able to do this. Let's say the side length is S. Then what we want to do is take the total mass of this, let's say M, and we're gonna break this up into one side at a time so that each side, each face has mass equal to M over six. Since the density is constant, this means that we can solve for the density rho as M divided by six S squared. That is total mass divided by the total area. Okay, now here's the plan. What we're going to do is think about each of the faces separately. There are really two types of faces. There's the top and the bottom face, which really just looks like a square plate rotated about an axis piercing through the center. We'll do that computation. But then we're also going to do the four side plates, which are different. The way we're gonna handle that is we're going to think about rotating a square plate about a central vertical axis compute the moment of inertia of that, and then use the parallel axis theorem to translate that out, a distance of S over two. Okay, so with that plan in mind, let's work with the top and the bottom face first. Each of those has the same moment of inertia. Let's compute that working in the X, Y plane. So X and Y go from minus S over two to plus S over two, and the moment of inertia element is quantity X squared plus Y squared times the mass element rho dx dy. Integrating that is gonna be not so bad. X squared integrates to x cubed over three times y. Y squared integrates to y cubed over three times x. Multiply this by rho and evaluate as x and y go from minus s over two to plus s over two. A little bit of algebraic simplification and combination gives us an answer of rho s to the fourth over six. Now, if we use what we know about the density as being m over six s squared, then we get a contribution to the moment of inertia of m s squared over 36. That is for each of the top and the bottom plates. So that means the total moment of inertia of the top and the bottom is m s squared over 18. Okay. That's the top and the bottom. Let's work with the sides now. And remember our plan is to compute the moment of inertia about a central axis and then do parallel translation. Okay, so let's work in say the XZ plane where now the distance to the axis of rotation R is simply X. That means that R squared is X squared and we have to integrate X squared rho dx dz, as x and z go from minus s over two to plus s over two. This is gonna be easy. x squared integrates to x cubed over three times z. Evaluating these from minus s over two to s over two and multiplying by rho gives us rho s to the fourth over 12, which substituting in for mass gives us m s squared over 72. That has not much moment of inertia. It's half of what a top or bottom face was. But when we translate it by a distance s over two, then what we get from the parallel axis theorem is m s squared over 72 plus m over six, the mass, times quantity s over two squared. Substituting in, expanding that out, simplifying that algebraically gives us an answer of ms squared over 18. That's for one side plate. For four side plates, what we get is a net total of two ninths ms squared. 
Combining that with the top and the bottom contributions to moment of inertia gives us a final answer of 5 eighteenths ms squared for the moment of inertia. That's that's kind of cool. It's not obvious. It's totally doable breaking this object into simple parts and using basic integrals and the parallel axis theorem. This is a good template for other examples.